What's up you guys? I'm Natasha. This is Shepherding Peppers Farm and today we're doing a bit of a different video. I had a request from one of our viewers to talk about some of the things that I actually use on the homestead. Some appliances like juicers and some things that I find really helpful in the garden and I thought that was a really really good idea. I love Amazon Prime Day. Um, I also love Black Friday. I still do all of our shopping online in that way because I'm not going to fight people in the stores. But a good deal is a good deal and you got to take advantage of it, right? I'm going to say flat out I'm not an affiliate for any of these companies so I'm gonna give you my honest reviews on them for better or worse you can do what you want with it I will link the products that I'm talking about in our Amazon store we do get a small commission if you choose to go through our store that way it's not a lot but it's something so that's pretty cool if you want to go that route again that's your call so I'm actually gonna start this off with the dehydrator I'm gonna take you to the garage and I'm gonna show you what I mean by dehydrators so down here I have my dehydrator. It's actually right next to my freezer. I have two dehydrators. I've had three since I started homesteading. Camera's on, okay. <laughs> and right now I'm dehydrating peppers. I'm dehydrating these for two main reasons. One, I wanna save the seeds for my peppers so I don't have to buy them again in the future. And two, I use the outer portions of the peppers for making different seasonings and spices. So right here I just have the tops of the Serrano sugar rush peach peppers, and I'm making those into hot sauce. So I just need the tops really with the seeds to, to save them. These are Granada seasoning peppers, and I'm dehydrating the tops as well as the actual flesh because we will grind this up into Granada seasoning powder. Orange jalapenos, we're dehydrating these to make powdered jalapeno seasoning. So, And Fresnos, they make an excellent chili crisp, so we're doing that as well. So I'm gonna put these in the dehydrator. I want to dehydrate these under 100 degrees so that way I do not affect the germination on the seeds. This is my favorite dehydrator that I have had. It was an investment, I will say that. Our first dehydrator that we got basically gave up on us about a year into the process, which is fair. We do run our dehydrators extremely hard. This is one appliance that we pretty much have going 24 seven, it's an all the time thing. I am continually saving seeds or dehydrating peppers or other foods or flowers to make into balms um, and tallows for your skin or to dry to make teas and tinctures, things of that nature. Our dehydrators are running all the time. At least one is pretty much always going, even in the winter when there's not a ton of seeds to save or things like that. I'll be making homemade fruit roll-ups for the kids or homemade beef jerky and you do that in the dehydrator. So there's a lot of uses for them. Now this one, my grandfather got for me as a gift, which was very, very sweet of him. And this one is really good too. This is a magic mill. I'm gonna put photos in so you can see them. This one is nice because it fits on one of these wire shelves, whereas that guy is really big and he's more industrial. The reason that I favor the larger one is because the trays are bigger and it fits more of them in there. So I can dehydrate more at one time, which is helpful for turnover rates. Whereas this is a little bit smaller, it's more compact, you can put it on a shelf. This is a good dehydrator, but every, every time it's done running a cycle, you have to reset the temperature on it. It automatically goes back to 165 degrees, and if you forget to reset it, you'll crisp your seeds and then they won't germinate for you because it's way too high of temperature. Whereas that dehydrator will automatically remember whatever temperature you had previously set it to, and you can adjust it as needed, but I can continue to put seeds in there and run it through without having to worry about it. They're both really good. I do favor that one. I haven't had any issues with this one. I don't remember the name of the first one that I got, but I will put a photo in of it. I wouldn't buy that again, mostly because it wasn't as intensive as the one we have over there. And it died on me after like nine months to a year. So whereas these guys have been going for, this one's almost on nine months and this is on seven and they've been doing really good. We haven't had any hiccups with them, no issues at all. So a dehydrator is probably my number one biggest thing that I use on the farm for the most part. I, I'd i really have to think about it. I use our canners a lot too um, and our juicers. So we'll talk about those sorts of things. But, but yeah, the dehydrator has been kind of the number one heavy duty thing that I have used constantly because it saves seeds, it makes for snacks and meats and, and you can 
dehydrated vegetables and ground beef to store that. We've, I mean, it's just, it's really helpful, especially if you don't have a thousand dollars to spend on a, um, a freeze dryer. I would love a freeze dryer. That would be wonderful. I don't have that sort of cash, so maybe one day. <laughs> My adorable family is over there doing like a homeschool exercise uh, pulse thing. So I will film the rest of this video when they're done. All right, they're done. So we can continue. All right, let's talk about juicers. So I use my juicer a lot, not just for making juice, but I've actually been using it a lot this season to help with the process of making sauce. I considered buying one of those tomato pureeing machines, the electric ones that you can have on the counter, and they cost a couple hundred dollars. And originally I was gonna wait till Prime Day to get one. But then I was thinking about it and I was like, I have this cold press juicer that does pretty much exactly the same thing. It might not be perfect. It might not be to the highest possible standard that you can get it to, but it does a dang good job. Good enough for me, so I'm happy. So this is the juicer that we have. I had a different juicer last year and I was juicing watermelon because we like watermelon juice and we'll um, use it in a bunch of different things. You can make watermelon sorbet, it's really good. And the watermelon seeds shattered the top of the juicer. I'll put an image in here so you can see the old juicer and then I'll write in what this one is or put a picture in. This one's done an exceptional job. It's, it's held up to the watermelons, it's held up to the cantaloupes, it does great with the tomatoes. It is slow, it is a cold press juicer so it does take a good bit of time but it does a really good job. I will say it does leave a bit of pulp in there though which is great for things like making tomato sauce. Um, if you like juice that does not have any pulp, you're going to probably want to strain it. So if you are juicing cucumbers to drink them or juice blends like carrots and cucumbers and apples and things like that, and you just want juice, you don't want pulp, you're going to need to strain the juice that comes out of here. So it's a personal choice. I really, really like this. This is a juicer that I would recommend. It's held up really, really well. I would not recommend the old juicer. Okay, this is a cutesy little thing. I love this. This is our egg spinner. I've seen the ones that are just kind of flat and hang up over there. I have somewhat eclectic taste. I like things that are a little bit more unique. For example, these are our tea strainers. You put your herbs in there, your tea blends, and you let it seep and it's just the cutest thing in life. So I love these. I do have little mesh drawstring bags if I'm wanting to make like a bulk amount of tea, which is fine. But these are our tea strainers. And then I have these little cups. And you'll see these in the next tea making video, but this is where I store a lot of my tea blends, the homemade tea blends and these little containers. I like the coloring, they're cute. You put little labels on them. So these hold up really well. Outside, this gets used all the time. Throughout all the growing seasons, this is constantly in use. It did take a bit of getting used to when we first got it because it can be a little touchy just like anything. But this has been extraordinarily helpful when it comes to tying up my tomatoes or helping to stake up the dahlias or training the cucumbers to the trellis. This is probably one of the things that I almost always have with me when I go outside with my harvesting basket. This is a really, really great tool. It makes it much quicker. It's much easier than tomato clamps or twist ties. Didn't really enjoy those, so this is great. Another kind of important thing is a water bath canner and a pressure canner. I'm actually gonna be using the pressure canner in just a second because I have uh, tomatillos that have been cooked down with peppers. No, yes. Tomatillos that have been cooked down with peppers and onion and garlic that we use to make homemade guacamole salsa. And I'm gonna be using that in the pressure canner to cook that down and together. So having a pressure canner is really, really helpful, especially with things that you can't water bath can that require that more intense canning process. I was a little scared of our pressure canner at first. It intimidated me because you hear horror stories, but our pressure canner has been really easy to use. It's, it's been really straightforward. I really, really like it. I haven't had any hiccups with it so far. That's been great. The water bath canner is good too. I actually use my water bath canner to make huge batches of chili, and then I'll pressure can the chili, and then we have 
homemade canned items like that. And so it has a dual purpose, the water bath can. And it also gets used for making um, tomato sauce because we do big batches of cooking that way. Now, something that I've actually had other people notice and ask me about, which is really helpful, are these right here. Back up. So right here, I have these bins. Now, I don't have a pantry in the house. I've talked about this quite a bit. Someone complained about it a little bit. And so we've had to make do with a lot of non-conventional storage options. And right now, a lot of these baskets are ripening tomatoes. So I could freeze them and make more sauce. We have some um, potatoes down there and then some squash. Those have been really essential in being able to effectively store things because of the fact that we don't have a pantry. Now our laundry room is a decent enough size that if we didn't do the homesteading thing, we could possibly use that as a pantry, but we do the homesteading thing. So we store a lot of food and a lot of items like that. So, all right, let's come look at more of these pantry type items. So down here I have a lot of gallon size jars. I use these for storing different dry goods. We do have the big like five gallon buckets that hold flour and we have rice. Um, i trying to think of what else we have in there. Uh, oats, things of that nature. That's kind of what we have in there. And then in these other gallon size containers, I don't wanna lug out the big heavy five gallon ones all the time if I don't have to. So I have things like powdered sugar and dry pancake mix that we made on the farm out here. And for making hot sauce, I use these with the vinegar and store the peppers. So having several gallon size containers has been really, really helpful. I didn't realize how much I would need those, but once I started buying them, I ended up getting several more because they're just really practical. It's a really great way to store things. It's really helpful. And then I just recently started making the switch over to these containers right here because for a long time I had stored, so this is like fruit pectin. This is what we would use in making jellies or jams. And I buy everything that I can in bulk because it's cheaper that way. We have a very large family. So for a long time, I've been using my canning jars for holding dried goods that don't really fit into a gallon size container. And that started to become really impractical because each year we grow more and more stuff and I can use all of these jars. Now I do use jars that technically they say you're not supposed to use in canning and they work fine. Um, but my actual canning canning jars, I like to use those for the purpose of canning if I can. So we recently started making this gradual switch over to these. Not only do they look really pretty, um, like this is Morton's curing salt. This is for making things like summer sausage. It's great for that, for curing meats. They're crazy showing. Yeah. And so I have a label on one side and if I wanna make them look all pretty, I can hide the label. Uh, I have a bunch more up here. So, you can see all through here. So this is like cinnamon and Cajun seasoning. This is some extra onion powder. I have a giant thing of homemade onion powder in the back right there. And I'm gradually working, because you can see all of these jars at the top have stuff in them that are not actually <laughs> things that are canned. So I'm gradually making the switch over to these jars and I really like it. I think this is gonna work really well because I'm gonna be able to see it. It fits nicely in my cupboards, which is great because I need the space as much as possible. And yeah, all right, well, it's not a super long list, but those are kind of the top things that, that I can think of off the top of my head. If I think of anything else today, I'll add it in, but it has to be today because tomorrow I wanna edit this so I can have it out on Thursday for you guys, which is really rare for me to like actually film a video and have it out in the same week. Typically you're about seven days behind when I actually shot the video because I, I can't, I have to give myself a solid week because big families are crazy. So, all right, on that note, I will see you guys later. I hope this helped you. I hope you enjoy Prime Day. And if you have any suggestions, please feel free to leave them for me. I love hearing your guys' feedback and comments. So, all right, say bye. 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 He doesn't look very happy, but that's because he has his um, defense 
He's, he's getting his doctorate. He already wrote his doctorate, it's done. And the final step is giving your oral defense and that's happening tomorrow. So he's, he's a little nervous. So wish him luck and we'll see you guys later. So bye again. Bye. 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 Yeah, you can hear the happiness.